Hi guys, this is Brad Lincoln from Pathway to Oz. And today we have a bit of a different video for you. Uh, me and Nick are gonna be working together on this one. First of all, I'm gonna go through and discuss uh, this new course that we have available to international students and how the program works. Then Nick's gonna jump on and give you a really solid rundown on how this type of program can generate a pathway to a more permanent visa for you in Australia. Um, now, it's a bit different to normal, um, so that's, that's why we're sort of gonna do this one together and so you can really get an idea about the program itself in the course and, and how this pathway could possibly work for you in the future. So let's get right into it. Uh, the Diploma of Horticulture. Now, this has only recently been at its scope for international students. It's a really, really cool program. Reason I say this is the agricultural sector in Australia, so farming and all that sort of stuff, it's huge. It is gonna be one of the biggest industries we have here. Obviously, Australia is a huge country. We have a huge amount of land and a very big portion of that is farmland. Um, so this industry is absolutely dying for workers. Yeah, I mean, it, it's crazy. The amount of work available in the agricultural sector is just absolutely phenomenal. And the Diploma of Horticulture is gonna give you the breaking you need to get into this industry. Now, the course itself, the type of things you'll cover are really diverse, obviously because the horticultural and agricultural sector is very diverse as well. So some of the things you'll cover are developing and planning hydroponic systems, monitor and managing soils and the chemicals that are in there, collect and classify plants and crops, and developing horticultural production plans. So as you can see, very like diverse, different things that you will cover in this program and pretty interesting stuff too. What's the outcome of doing this diploma? So basically, once you've completed this diploma, you'll be qualified as either a senior horticulturist, horticulturalist, I should say, or as an agricultural technician. And that's the important one. And Nick will delve a bit more into that um, when he takes over. The course and package, how does it work? Okay, so this is where it does work slightly a bit differently to the programs we've talked about in the past, if you follow our channel. So when doing the Diploma of Horticulture, unfortunately, it doesn't allow you to apply for the grad visa. So you are gonna need to put something else on there or tack something else on there to allow you to work in that industry once you finish your qualification to build up your experience. So what we would recommend is the same school that offers the horticulture program also offers a diploma of leadership and management. This is a great program to utilize to build, bide yourself more time. It's generally quite low intensity. Um, it's complementary to the program that you've studied and it's gonna give you the time you need in Australia to build up that on the job experience so you can start looking at that, those more permanent visas. So we would generally recommend when doing the Diploma of Horticulture, we package this with a Diploma of Leadership and Management that goes for an additional year. The cost of this course is $8,000 and it's a further $8,000 for the Diploma of Leadership and Management. So looking at around 16 grand for the total two year course package. Of course, this is available to you on a payment plan over the duration of your studies. Where can you do this course? So the course is currently being delivered in Adelaide, South Australia, which is an absolute phenomenal area to be doing a course like this. Adelaide is surrounded by so, so much agriculture and farmland, wineries. I mean, the world's your oyster down there when it comes to this sector. Um, and the course, as I've mentioned before, goes for two years. So really a great amount of time to, to explore that, that scene and, and get amongst Adelaide and what it has to offer. So guys, I'm now gonna throw it over to Nick who can have a chat to you about what benefits of this course. So over to you, Nick. Thanks, Brad. Um, yeah, so look, recently, as you can, as Brad's probably alluded to, immigration has made a huge push to try and encourage skilled uh, agricultural workers to assist, you know, in the farming industry in Australia. You know, the industry is lobbying really hard. Um, and I think if you're trying to migrate to Australia, it's always important to be in an occupation which is really in demand. Um, so this lobbying has resulted in, you know, a few proposed options. So immigration's recently proposed an agricultural visa not much has, has come of that yet. Um, immigration has also announced a, a horticulture labour agreement, which just makes it a little bit easier for farmers or companies to sponsor agricultural workers or skilled agricultural workers. Um, however, look, today I want to focus on how certain states, for example, South Australia, have gone a step further and included you know, a lot of different agricultural options or occupations on their actual state occupation list. 
Um, so look, if it's on the state occupation list, it might mean, it might make you eligible for the skilled regional visa, the subclass 491. Um, so we've got a lot of an, other videos and information on that. So, you know, check out those other videos. Um, but look, in a nutshell, in order to apply for one of these visas, you first need to meet, you know, the visa requirements, but then most importantly, you need to meet the requirements of the skill assessment and the state migration requirements as well. So look, for you know, example purposes only, uh, we're gonna look at the occupation of agricultural technician. Now, look, I wanna stress this is an example only. Um, I'd always recommend chatting with a registered migration agent who can look at your situation in detail. However, look, currently the occupation of agricultural technician is on the South Australia occupation list. Um, if you look at the South Australia migration website, you can see the requirements for the nomination. So look, essentially, I think it's under two streams. They're currently working in South Australia stream and the South Australian graduate stream. Um, so if you look at the website, you can kind of tell the requirements uh, that you hold a relevant you know, qualification and that you've got a certain amount of work experience in the industry, in that state. Now, look, if we go to the VetAssess website, who is the skill assessor for the occupation, um, you can see that the requirements are that you hold a relevant uh, Australian di diploma or higher qualification in that occupation and that you have at least one year of post-qualification work experience working for at least 20 hours per week in a highly related occupation. So look, I'm just going to give you an example of how it could work. Um, you know, basically you come out and obviously you do need that one year of post-qualification work experience to do the skill assessment. So let's say, for example, you come out and you do a one year of diploma of horticulture, you have a short break and then you do another year, you know, diploma of leadership and management. Um, so when you finish the diploma of horticulture, if you're working in the industry, you can start counting straight away as soon as you finish, build up that one year of highly related work experience and then look to apply for the skill assessment. Um, if you look at the South Australian Migration website, if you've got a year of work experience, you potentially should have no worries passing the state requirements as well. Um, so once you do have you know, the work experience, lodge the skill assessment. Once you get that back, you, know, you might look to potentially apply for, or lodge your expression of interest for the visa, you know, request South Australian nomination, um, and then you know, hopefully get invited by the state for that occupation. So look, I hope you found this information useful. Um, I do really want to stress that it is for example purposes only, just to sort of you know, give you an example of how it could work. Um, you know, it might work with a lot of different other occupations, but I would strongly recommend um, you know, chatting with a registered migration agent who can look at your specific circumstances to ensure you, know, you do meet the requirements. Thank you.